30 p.m. this evening, UK time. We'll start with Andy Dunn at the front here. Hi, Carl. Andy Dunn from the Daily Mirror. Um, obviously, we've spoken a lot about individual battles. Could you, out of interest, tell us who the toughest individual opponent you've played against is throughout your career, club and country? And if it's not Mbappe, how would that player compare? The guy who's giving you the hardest time. Um, for me, technically I didn't play against Mbappe. 1v1, it was more Neymar. I think Neymar's a fantastic player. Um, I would probably say Sadio Mane, um, just because he never gives you, you know, a moment's rest on the ball. Uh, I'm not saying that the the other guys that I mentioned don't, but you know, they probably don't defend as much as you know Mane does in the use or save their energy when they're attacking. So for me, it'll probably be Mane. Uh, Carl, um, it's kind of a two-part, and the first one's a very short one. Yeah. According to FIFA stats, you're still the fastest England player out of the World Cup. Perfect. Um, have you got a message for the young whippersnappers who think they're pacey in the rest of the squad? Just listen to FIFA. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Perhaps more seriously, Mbappe's yeah. gone a kilometre an hour faster than you, though. Um, as you've got more experience, do you find you can actually get to the ball quicker because you're anticipating more? Is it just down to straight pace, or can you do things with you know your knowledge of the game to, to perhaps compensate for that? Yeah, you, you have to use a little bit of nous. You can't be a speedboat without no driver. You need to obviously use your brain when needed. Um, and you know, I can't get as tight to him as I probably would do on some other players. That's just you know the nature of the game. I remember playing against Theo Walcott once, and I've tried to get so close to him and. All of a sudden, he just spins in behind you, and you kind of think, "Well, that's your lesson taught." Um, and you need to make the, the the mistakes that you make are not costly mistakes. He's going to get the better of whoever plays at right back. He, he's going to get the better of you one, two, three, three occasions a game. He's a great player, but you need to make that them occasions are as few as possible and not, not as costly. Back to Jacob Steinberg. Hi, Kyle. Um, obviously, some doubt over whether you would be able to make the uh, the tournament when you had groin surgery in, in October. How much of a relief was it when you've come through those last two games against Wales and uh, and Senegal without any issues? And, and judging by the stats we've just heard, it sounds like you are in, in good condition. Are you feeling at the Europe 100% now, physically? No, I, I feel great. Obviously, when I, I first did it, um, I think I did it you know, a couple of weeks before probably being diagnosed with going having to go down for surgery and I've continued playing. Um, but when the, the surgeon said, you've got a rupture in your groin, you know, you kind of, I did think that could this be touch and go, but again, I, I had to believe in myself. Um, the physios, both at England and Man City, and I've said this, have, you know, been massive in getting me where I needed to be. And then also the, the strength and conditioning guys in making me do the 60 minutes and then the, the full 90 and coming out unscathed. So I feel really good. I feel basically back to normal, touch wood. And, you know, hopefully that can continue and there's no more scares of that. Thank you. Hi, Kyle. Uh, reporting from uh, Swedish Press. Do you, have, by any chance, have any uh, update on Raheem Sterling and uh, how has his absence affected the team so far? I don't think it's affected us because obviously, you know, Raheem has had to do what Raheem's had to do for his family. Um, I don't really feel too comfortable with talking about that just because it's a security reason we're all here, you know, playing for the country and we're obviously not at home. So I don't really want to go too much into the security element of our houses and stuff. And we'll finish with Sammy Mockbell there. Hi, Kyle. Um, Jordan Pickford will win his, if he plays, obviously, will win yeah. his 50th cap on, on Saturday. You have must have played with him, obviously played with him a number of times. Um, in an England shirt, can you just talk a bit about sort of the the, the the development that you've seen in his in his games? He's never let England down, uh, and sort of the save as well, that big save against Sen um, um, in the Senegal game in the first yeah. half. No, I think as you just said, he's been absolutely top class for England. Um, 
you know, I spend a lot of time with him outside of the training field um, and we get along really well. So I've got nothing but praise to say for Jordan. Uh, congratulations for obviously getting your 50th cap and hopefully you can put in the performances that you've been putting in, you know, for the last number of years to kind of move Joe Hart off the pedestal, I think was a a big statement for him to say, you know, okay, I'm here and I'm on the international stadium and he, he's not let us down, as you just said, he's, he's been fantastic and hopefully that can continue for many years. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everyone, we'll end it there. Thanks for your time today. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Right.